Another question. Jennifer, how are you doing? Um, I heard some people quit drinking by turning into cannabis. I wonder if that's a good idea. I don't think it is anyway. Um, I think you're sw switching. It depends what your, your mentality is in this, you know. Um, for me, it's switching one thing for another. I mean, my whole... My whole um, I started out with this journey trying to become the best possible version of myself and to be a good um, dad for my son, uh, be a good positive influence. So for me, that was a no-no, you know, switching out from one drug to another is just, um, you know, from a from a health perspective, I, you know, you can make an argument that the the cannabis is, is uh, less damaging to you. But I think from the perspective of... Um, Sorry, turn that light down a bit. It's a bit bright. Um, from the perspective of uh, what it's doing to your to your life in terms of you, you've only got a certain amount of time. When I was smoking weed, I just wasn't getting anything done in my life. So you know that's just the the way it is, isn't it? You know. So yeah, for me, it's um it's not a good thing. Um. Wilbert says, I stopped drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes five and a half years ago. Life has become normal. That's it, exactly. Uh, it's amazing how we uh, really look at, um, we really look at alcohol as being normal in society. I mean, it's considered that. And then when you stop, it takes a while before you normalize your life again. And you get rid of the habits, but then um yeah it's just amazing you know um i mean from the beginning of this this uh journey for me it's always it took me a while to discover that it's the journey that is important that the journey is everything um you know the destination who ca who cares you know who cares where you get to at the end of it uh it doesn't matter it's what you do on the way that matters and i think you've got a choice in this you know whether you spend uh I did a, a video earlier on about whether or not it's bad or how bad is it to um, to binge drink once a month, you know. And that was, I mean, for me, I used to binge drink. That was my thing, lots of binge drinking. Um, and, you know, it's, it's whether you look at it, whether you're, you're robbing yourself for five minutes or uh, one night a, a month or um, every night, you know, and it's a cumulative thing which just makes you, I mean, for me, it was just, it made me half-witted all the time, you know, when you're drinking and then when you're not drinking. So, Morganator, how are you doing? Hey, Suzanne from Iowa. Um, do you have any thoughts on Daniel, Daniel Amen's books? What, what, which ones are they now? I haven't read them, so I, I don't think so. Um, Red Wing says it's been five weeks, no more, and feeling so much better. Well done. That's what I want to hear. Um, Jared, I'm on week two of no beer or weed after 30 years of chronic drinking and smoking. I feel like a different man. Yeah, you're well appreciated. Thank you. And well done. Suzanne, I can easily go three or five days without alcohol. And I feel great, but then I have, uh, I feel so good that I decide to drink and then I feel like crap. I tell you, that's, you hear that story over and over again. It's, um, you know, you hear people get into 30 days and then celebrating with, with alcohol because they haven't figured out how to, um, how to celebrate without it. But you know, you can do three, three, three days or five days. I mean, everyone stops drinking alcohol at some stage in their lives. You know, when you stop drinking to go to bed, you, you stop drinking. When you go to work, you don't drink. So there's plenty of times when you don't drink, you just have to extend that time. Same with you. Take your, your three or five days and extend it out. I mean, for me, it's not the stop in drinking alcohol. It's what you do afterwards that matters. It's how you reset your brain. I mean, that brain reset can take a long time, um, but it's a gradual process. It's it's sort of a, you're, you're on a continuum. So it's a lot harder in the beginning, and then it gets easier and easier and easier, depending on what you do up here. You know, that's that's the big thing. Jennifer, I wonder why the pandemic has made more people want to quit drinking. With the stress, do you think more people? Yeah, it's it's funny because 
with the 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 amount of deaths, the amount of sales here in Spain went up. I think by at least twenty five percent, if not fifty percent, and the amount of deaths that have been recorded since the pandemic started from alcohol um, is about the same, about twenty five percent more deaths. And that's not taking into account the deaths of people who, um, for one reason or another, you know, their lives were ruined and, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of shit's going to come out of uh, the pandemic in more ways than one. So, unfortunately, have you noticed any long term mental effects from drinking uh, for so long, like you know, learning new things? No, it's, uh, you know, there's, when you go through a change, like when you, change something like this so significant in your life. I mean, alcohol for me was something I did all of my life. Even though I didn't drink all of my life, you're prepared for it from day one. Um, everyone around you, you're prepared for that normality from day one, from the time that you're born, this is the propaganda that you get into your head. So that's what you're dealing with when you're stopping and you have to get rid of that. That's one of my jobs is to try and um, really extract that or to change the, the framework. For, for alcohol um, or for the for the instant gratification mentality more than anything else. So um, when you make a change and you, you really have to, uh, there's so much that you need to change. There's so many different things. You, you know, it's not, not a big thing that you have to change all at once, but it's a gradual process. And those parts of your brain that are responsible for, um, for all the big changes, for, for decision-making, for, uh, patience for perseverance for um for trying to be positive despite what's happening around you for um you know just talking to your mates and saying i'm not going to drink anymore all of those things that you need to do that all builds those parts of your brain that you need for learning and thinking for me I, i've never learned as strong i mean i i get tired with the amount of learning that i'm doing now it's because um, I'm spending so much time reading and studying and you know, just trying to, um, I'm catching up with myself for all the years that I didn't do these things. Um, but yeah, definitely. I don't think that there's, I think you're, um, you know, and obviously it depends on the person and the amount of alcohol that you've drank. Uh, you know, if you, if you've caused that much damage to your, your brain, permanent damage, then that's not going to be fixed. But for most people, um, you know, they say alcohol changes your brain, well, so does really anything else that you do in your life um, over and over again. It changes the way that you think. It changes your the, the brain structure. Um, but with alcohol, you can reverse that. A lot of the brain stuff, a lot of the, the, the habits um, can be changed. So, yeah. I really think that's a, there's a possibility of that. Yeah, I wish I could just uh, keep off the, the booze turned off instead of dipping back in at the weekends. Well, you know, keep at it because you will get there. Uh, and like I said, you know, where if you really want some help, come over to V2 because we've got a lot of stuff over there that can help you. Um, Doesn't do anything for me yet. No worries. Uh, no worries, Suzanne. Uh, day five here. Uh, alcohol didn't give me anything. Uh, only a dull feeling in the evenings and huge anxiety. That's one of the problems with alcohol is people think that it cures anxiety and it makes you relaxed. It doesn't. It does the opposite. You know, it creates anxiety because you're, like I said, you've only so much time in this in this world and so so much you've only got so much energy you've got so much money and you're spending all those things on the wrong in the wrong areas that's going to have an effect a, a knock-on effect in everything else that you do you know and that's compounding it's not just it's not just one thing adds up to another it's the 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 effects get compounded the the consequences get compounded um The only struggle I have is the discomfort and worries at the time that when I would usually start to drink. Everyone has that, so that's normal. Join the club, you know. Um, I watch your videos every night before bed. You use subliminal messages and binaural beats. Hope that works for you. 
started the 30 day sobriety solution by Jack Kenfield helping so far. I don't know it. I know Jack Kenfield. All right. Last time, five weeks ago was so bad. It made me also not go back down that road ever again. It's all these experiences that, um, that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it's a journey. Uh, you know, the journey is is everything, and, and sometimes people take it take a lot more, a lot longer before they can really get to grips with themselves um, and to change mindsets. And the mindsets change very gradually. So if you stop and then you haven't changed anything, you're still trying to think in the same way. Um, it's very likely that you'll go back again. So it is important from day one to to really start to change the way that you think. Um, and move yourself away from the drinker's brain, uh, as I like to call it. Jennifer, um, are you still hiking? Yeah, uh, every so often I've got a, a back problem at the moment, so I'm trying to get that sorted out. Um, yeah, and the videos in nature, is, is, to be honest with you, is so much more, um, you know, we've got a lot on at the moment. We're sort of in the middle of a move to a different country, so um, we're. Uh, uh, it's a lot easier for me to set up here and uh, do the videos in here. I do like doing the videos out in the wild because it's, uh, you know, hit two birds with one stone. But when I'm out walking, I like to just be with myself and my thoughts at the moment. But they will come back. Like I said, we're going to Andorra, so we're going to be surrounded by lovely nature. So I'm definitely going to do some up there. Tommy, how are you doing? <laughs> Seeing your, your comments almost every day, mate. I really appreciate it. Eric, what were your favorite ways to keep yourself busy or short in time? Uh, you're thinking just one or two is okay each day. Uh, what What were your favorite ways to keep yourself busy or shorten the time? You're thinking, yeah, no, I never thought that from the beginning. I mean, before you hear my my two boys outside now barking. Um, before I I stopped drinking. If there's somebody at the door. <laughs> uh, before I stopped drinking, um, this time there was a lot of moderation and it was all half hour stuff that I was doing. So uh, I never thought just one or two was okay. It was always like stopping to try and um, give myself a break and prove that I wasn't an alcoholic, all those kind of things. But this time, um, yeah, I never thought it, you know, it was just to try to put that out of my mind all, all the time, you know. Um, Favorite ways to keep myself busy was walking. You know, at the beginning, I was walking so much, three, four hours a day, you know, and that got me outside of the the the, the environment, the triggers, and it just gave me the chance to think. It tired me out. There's so many benefits to it. Uh, Suzanne, yeah, if you go to habitsv2.com, you, that's our platform. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so it's www.habitsv2.com. You'll see it at the beginning of this or in the link down below. Uh, you know, there's also this, the, um, we've got a, um, a quick start preparation, we call it. It's a short course, basically, to get you thinking about, uh, change a few mindsets and get you thinking about, so you step across that, that line and you start the, the journey in a, in a different way. That's what I'm saying about stepping, you know, getting get to that day one and day two and day three and really focusing forwards instead of back, focusing on what you're going to gain instead of what you're losing, you know, because you're losing nothing from this. Uh, yeah, Johnny, how you doing, mate? I've started to experience myself as what I can only describe as a completely different person. Also, like a memory of who I was as a child. Yeah, it's um, one of the biggest things that happened to me, and I notice it in so many different people. Is you can you can be very harsh on yourself at the beginning because you're in pain, um, and everybody starts out this journey in pain, you know, because it's all about the the, it's a natural thing of pain and pleasure, pain and pleasure. And you're trying to avoid pleasure as much as you can or avoid pain as much as you can and get as much pleasure in your life as much as you can. And 
it's when that balance gets all screwed up, you know, so you've got more pain out of what you're doing um, than than pleasure, you know. And sometimes it takes, you know, so, some people um, start out, they, they have the first drinks. God love them. And, you know, I wish I was there. Uh, and they feel the the toxic hit, the, the damage, and they never drink again. And they say, that's not for me. It's the same thing with cigarettes. Some people smoke the first cigarettes, cough a lung up, and uh, that's it. But for me, it took 30 years. For other people, it takes 20 years. For other people, you know, it depends what's happening along the way. Um, but you, everyone starts off on the journey with that level of pain. And what you know that everyone knows that they've caused it themselves, you know, regardless of what you're actually blaming. You know, if there is any blame that you're putting out, it's, you know, deep down, you know, there's a conflict there inside all the time, all the time that you're drinking. Your body looks at this as a toxin. That's it, period. And your mind is trying to convince yourself that it's fun. And there's plenty of um, brainwashing that's gone on before that, you know, propaganda, whatever, you know, whatever way you want to look at it is we're brought up in a society that um, that looks at alcohol drinking as normal and glorifies alcohol drinking. So you have to get get over that. But anyway, w w once you get to that starting line, it's very easy to, to be hard on yourself. And I think once you start moving forwards, and you start to understand how much the alcohol was holding you back and how much your life is improving without it. You, you, you're you moving away from pain. And as long as you've got a motivation that's pulling you forwards, I think then your mind opens up. You know, people say they, they've had, uh, I had the same thing. There was, I had the most vivid dreams within the first month of stopping drinking, uh, probably after the first week and then moving forwards. And I still get vivid dreams, not as much as I did back then, but... The, the, those memories start coming back and I think you're making connections and your your brain is um, uh, when you're drinking your brain is all the time short circuited uh, you know like I like to think of it as you know you turn yourself into a half wit sort of thing you know deliberately um, but that dummification that moronification doesn't just happen when you're drinking it sort of seeps into your normal life so you know, not, not only constricts your um, your day to day thinking, but it constricts those connections that you make. You know, and you need that to, you know, one connection leads you to another thing. You know, you smell something, it reminds you of something in your past, and then that reminds you of something else, and you're making all these different connections. Um, so that that's what's happening there, and I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, it's one of the best things, just that opening up your brain. So I hope that answers your question anxiety is a good one um hey udo uh have severe tinnitus could it be alcohol could be trip to the doctor i think to get that sorted out big bear i gave up for four months not long ago but the urge became too much i don't touch cigarettes or any other drugs do you think it's possible to stay clean yeah I, I'm doing it and, you know, I know tons and tons of people now that are doing it and really happy that you, they did, you know. It's, like I said, you know, the, the, that year for me, getting past that year is is whatever way it is for, for us as a species, you know, there, there's, a, there's something about getting past the year, not in the time frame, you know, like you've passed a year, but um, – just getting yourself into the position where uh, you know the seasons. You know we go through one cycle of the of the um, around the the sun. I think that's something special, and it it does make a big difference when you get past that. From the perspective also that you know um, you've chalked off one year. It's very hard to go back then. Uh, but you, I often see people going back after two or three or four months, and you know, like I said, it's it's getting your your head in the right place where you're thinking. I'm never doing that again, you know. There's there's just so much going on in my life now, uh, and that, that's on one pr uh, perspective. But also from another perspective, it's understanding just what alcohol is, how much damage it's caused to you from a reality point of view. You know, like lining up alcohol with heroin and seeing the comparison between those two, lining up uh, alcohol with petrol, uh, and would you put those two things into your body? You know, so. Looking at it from that perspective, 
Suzanne says, I hate the hangovers. Uh, you'd think those would keep me from drinking again. I guess that's what, yeah, the, the hangovers get worse as worse as you're going forwards as well. Um, he's a doctor who practices as a psychiatrist. He does brain scans to show how horrible alcohol and other drugs are on the brain. His books help me to realize how dangerous alcohol is. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, the, the, the human body, your, your body tells you how dangerous alcohol is the, the moment you drink it and you throw up. Uh, or the world starts spinning around. I mean, everything in your body is screaming to you, don't do this again. And it's only um, it's only society, your friends that keep you going. You know, you don't, you know, especially from a, um, a male point of view, I can only speak from that perspective. But, you know, when I started drinking first, I didn't want to look like a dickhead, you know. I didn't want to uh, look like a wuss, so you keep drinking. I remember thinking a, a mate of mine who was younger than me could drink four times the amount that I could. And I was totally jealous of him. You know, I could only drink two, three pints of beer and that's it. I, my head would start spinning around and uh, I'd start feeling sick. And we don't look at it like that because we're not educated that way. You know, we're educated. Um, I was. That if you if you do that, that it, there's something wrong with you. You know, these are the, the men that I was surrounded by, the people that I was surrounded by. Um. So I wish I, I, I'd copped on there, or somebody had said to me, "Do you know what your body is doing?" You know. Um, quit drinking over a year ago uh, when I first found it. Yeah, great to hear. <laughs> woof woof. <laughs> yeah, the boys are there. Uh, Esther says sorry for that. <laughs> They're just nutcases, so I wouldn't worry about them. Yeah, the walking, I mean, the walking has, has saved me on so many occasions in life, not just with alcohol, with other things. You know, if I'm, if I want to change my mood, I get out and have a walk. If I want to relax, I go out and have a walk. If I want to explore, obviously, uh, it's much better to walk than to drive. You know, it's uh, yeah, obviously uh, dependent on how, how, where you're going to explore. Um, I drank for 21 years now. Yes, it's the pain and pleasure uh, is what did it for me. It's every, everybody's the same, mate, you know. It's, um, you know, like when, when we're at the beginning of this journey, uh, we're starting to drink alcohol. It's, it's just so easy to get into it. I mean, um, and once you're into it, then it's like Alan Carr says, the pitcher plant it sucks you down. Uh, and it's very difficult to get out of it. And you only get out of it either when something really bad happens to you because of something that you've done when you're drinking or, uh, you know, something, you know, maybe, you know, you've, you've been in an accident or something like that, or you've hurt yourself or, um, you know, you've said something or done something to somebody and uh, after you've got sober, then, you know, there's that, there's the repercussions of that. Or you're you're starting to feel the negative consequences physically or mentally and that takes a long time you know your body is resilient uh, and alcohol is insipid so it, it takes a long time for the damage to really take a hold physically you know your body is fighting and fighting and fighting all the time so yeah i agree um is it true once an alcoholic you're always an alcoholic no it depends if you believe that. I mean, it's a belief. Yeah, look up the definition of alcoholic, and you'll find um, there's so many different people will say so many different things. I don't even use that now. They they say uh, what is it? Um, alcohol use disorder, I think it is. A U D. You know, at least that's more. It's more along the you know, alcohol use is on a spectrum. So you've got over here, you've got. Uh, granny or grandpa who drinks a, a gin and tonic once a year or a sherry or something like that. And over at the other end, you've got the guy or the woman that gets up in the morning and has a has a cure because um, they can't last the day without alcohol. So from that perspective, this person over here is much more uh, at problem. So they've got many, much, many more problems in their lives than granny, you know. But 
you know, Granny is still capable if she's down in a lot of alcohol of causing some serious damage in the moment, you know. So alcohol use disorder. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, all of these things are, are good for the doctor, for the medical profession, or for somebody who's trying to classify you into a, a, a put you into a box. But for you as a person, if 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 it helps you to stop drinking, if it helps to push you towards that moment when you say enough is enough. If it does that, then job well done. But if you continue to call yourself an alcoholic, then it, it, it's a straight jacket that you're putting onto yourself that you don't need to. You know, there's so many things that we do in life and we stop doing them and leave them behind. But why would you continue to say, well, this is something that I'm doing? And, you know, like there's, there's ample evidence around that the alcohol companies have got a hand in in uh, in all of this. You know, if they can convince you that you're always going to be an alcoholic, um, then you know they might get a few people to come back and start drinking again. You know, it's a state of mind. It's a belief. Uh, I don't believe that about myself. I never believed that about myself. And it was one of the things for me that kept me drinking for longer, much much longer than I would have done. You know, if if somebody had said to me, look. Putting alcohol inside your body is a poison, regardless of how much alcohol you're putting inside your body. If they said to me, putting alcohol inside your body is a poison and you shouldn't be doing it because it's going to damage you, then maybe I would have stopped a long time ago. But instead they said, no, nobody's got a problem with alcohol until you become an alcoholic. And then everyone says, well, what's my definition of an alcoholic? Okay, the guy over there who's in the, the gutter or sleeping in the doorway or beating his wife up in the because he you know he's he's drinking his vodka all day long. That's an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. I can get up every day. I go to work. You know, I might drink in the evenings, I might drink so you know too much, but there's nothing wrong with it with the drink. That's the mentality, that's the way I was talking to myself as a as a drinker. So then if 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 you're if that's your definition of a problem drinker is to get to this alcoholic level some serious shit has to happen before you will step across that line and, as AA says, admit that you're an alcoholic. Do you know what I mean? So it's a really dangerous, um, from a personal point of view, it's a very dangerous word to use. Um, yeah, I appreciate that, Suzanne. This is the first live I've caught. I needed to hear this today. We're going to be doing these. I'm not sure if we're going to do them every day, probably every couple of days, so... Um, I really appreciate that. Um, you're right, the hangovers have gotten worse. I wonder why that is. I'm 56 years young. Same age as me. Um, the problem is that your your body, uh, as you're getting older anyway, becomes more sensitive. Take the alcohol out of the equation. Your body just becomes more sensitive. Your organs are just not uh, as good as they were when you were 20. Add into that the... Um, the alcohol and that speeds up that process of organ deterioration. Um, like I say, most of your organs are going to survive once you stop. Most of your organs will. I mean, for the most part, your liver is going to uh, your liver will really um, heal itself. You know, I mean, it's only if your body is if your liver has gone into serious cirrhosis or that it won't heal itself. I mean, I, I had my liver checked out for the first time in. Uh, ever so uh, recently, and I had some scarring on the liver. It's a fact. What can I do about it? You know, it, it, I'm, I'm glad that it's only a small amount. So, do you know what I mean? But I think you, you have to understand that that your your body is. I mean, your the hangovers come because the alcohol is in your system um, and is not being dealt with by your liver and the other organs that are responsible for. Um, uh, for filtering out your bloodstream, right? So the more damage that is caused, the less that the less capable they are of of dealing with it. So the worse your hangovers are going to be. Uh, and add to that that your natural sensitivity to alcohol, and you know you've got problems. So, um, Iskander uh, does this insecurity, worry, and feeling during the time I would usually drink go away over time. Yeah, if you stop, it, you know, think about it like a habit. Um, 
you're used to doing whatever you're doing and there's a beer there take the beer out of it and you know there's something missing and it's like you're you've got the anxiety plus th there's a lot of um you know for me when i stopped there was a lot of problems that i had to deal with that hadn't been dealt with when i when i uh, stopped and i could no longer go back into the alcohol to hide the anxiety so the alcohol the anxiety is pumping up then all over the place hence why i went out walking a lot you know to try and burn the energy but uh yeah it's just that's the way it is yeah chemical imbalance what's a chemical imbalance you, you know that there's there's a for me it's i i understand where you're coming from i mean that's what we're taught this sort of chemical imbalance but people don't know what the balance is so they don't know what the imbalance is if you don't want the, what the balance is how can you know what the imbalance is so it's stop drinking and your body will balance itself out to what it should be you know stop drinking start eating right drink plenty of water get good sleep stop filling your head full of crap um and i'm telling you your brain will start to function properly you'll start to deal with the problems that you've got and those anxieties will fall away you know a lot of the anxieties that are there are caused because of the underlying issues you know when i was drinking i was pushing down so many problems pushing down so many negative emotions that i didn't like but the negative emotions were all screaming at me in my ear to say fucking deal with this you know what are you doing you know i'm, I'm getting scared here you have to deal with this problem but no no i'll have a drink instead push the emotions down and uh, not think about it that's what i'm saying half-witted thinking and when you live your life like that as a half-wit then you know you you come out the other end being uh, with a lot of problems but like i said stop drinking feed yourself good uh good nutrition whatever that nutrition is that you think um you know get get rid of the the processed foods drink plenty of water get plenty of sleep all of these things will come around slowly but surely um i'm going to answer one more a couple of questions then i'm going to go my voice is going and we've got a dinner on <laughs> how did you find going to sleep when you stopped drinking this it's one of those things that you um i couldn't sleep for the first probably week i didn't really get a good sleep at all but then gradually after that it starts to come around so um yeah morris just you know it's one of those things if you um if you can't sleep just put up with it don't lie there get up and do something try and burn a bit of energy off and then get back into bed try again you know and if you don't sleep it's the the price that you pay to get over it it is normal because you know you're when you're when you're drinking alcohol you're not actually getting that into that real deep sleep that you need the rem sleep because you're imagine that you fill yourself full of alcohol your body is there underneath the surface fighting this alcohol uh, when it's supposed to be relaxing and recuperating but it's not it's full alert you know red alert alarm bells screaming you know and trying to deal with the shit that you've put into it so you're never sleeping well with alcohol uh, and when you stop then um you know you've got the first of all you've got the heightened um energy levels but you've also got this um um where was i going with this lost my track uh you've also got sort of uh, uh your when you were drinking you weren't really going to sleep you were sort of comatosing it was like taking a sleeping pill every night and now you're not taking the sleeping pill it's like wide awake but don't worry it's it's natural this just happens mate so hope that helps take a lot of vitamins i agree i mean it's it, for me i think I, uh, in the beginning i took some vitamins multivitamins as a as an insurance thing you know just in case everything was there uh, um because I, I didn't know really uh, it took me a while before i got my nutrition sorted out yeah, a year, two years, maybe. Um, one year, one month sober from morning, nighttime drinking hard liquor, fair play. Yeah, I hope it's all well done, Jennifer. You know, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. No worries, Iskander. All right, take care of yourself. Thanks for um, popping in. I will do something do something in, a, in a, uh, either tomorrow or the next day i'll let you know uh take care of yourself and uh and have a have a good day onwards and upwards bye now